Hello. It's been a while, but I'm back with a banger. I mean, look at this thing. Is it not the most wonderful thing? I love it. I've been wearing it for the last like three days. I just can't get enough. Anyway, before I get started, I do want to be very clear. This is not going to be a tutorial for these individual granny squares. I did buy this pattern from Etsy that will be linked below. It's less than $2 and they're very easy. There are lots of good pictures to help you along the way. I love them obviously so definitely definitely get that pattern if you're interested in these this is a tutorial for laying out granny squares into a uh, cardigan or sweater or whatever you want to make it into um so yeah in this video what i will show you how to do is i will show you how to make a very basic granny square i will also show you how to make basic granny square triangles so you can make this little like decrease area for the neck hole i'll show you how to connect granny squares i will show you the layout that i used to make this cardigan and i will show you how to make this ribbing and buttonholes sound good okay great really quickly I want to address I've been gone for like two months almost now which was not what I wanted to do at all I decided to take the month of August off because the beginning of August I was on vacation with my family and then at the end of August I had a craft show that I was preparing for so I just wanted to take that month to set myself up. The craft show went really great, that was awesome, but shortly after I had a medical emergency with my cat and um, it's been kind of a nightmare getting him back to health. You know, we're getting there, he's not out of the woods yet, but um, you know, we're working on it. Hopefully things are kind of starting to normalize now and I'll be able to get to a better, like a more consistent upload schedule. But yeah, if you would like, please subscribe. If you could help me get to 500 subscribers, that would be really helpful because then I would have access to the community tab and uh, if something like this pops up again, I can just make a quick little post and explain what's up. I've been keeping people up to date on my Instagram, so that will be in the description box below if you'd like to follow me. I am beth.marchetti on Instagram. Anyway, let's learn how to make a granny square cardigan. The granny square cardigan of your dreams. To make a basic granny square, we're going to start out with a magic ring, and then we're going to chain three. And this chain three at the beginning of our rounds is always going to count as one double crochet. In that magic ring, we are going to double crochet twice more, chain two to create a corner, and then double crochet three. These groups of double crochet are called shells. To finish off this round, we are going to double crochet three and then chain two into that magic ring and repeat that two more times until we have a total of 12 stitches. At the end, we pull the tail of that magic ring to pull it closed and slip stitch to that original chain three to join. Now you have a little baby square, and you'll notice that all of those chain two spaces create a corner. To start off round two, we are going to slip stitch in the top of the next two stitches, and then slip stitch again into that first chain two space. In that chain two space, we're going to chain three, which again counts as one double crochet, and then double crochet two, chain two, 
and double crochet three in that chain two space to create another corner. Now we are going to skip to the next chain two space and double crochet three, chain two, double crochet three more in that chain two space. And we're going to repeat that in each of the next two chain two spaces to make more corners. When we reach the end, again, we are going to slip stitch into the top of that original chain three, and we have a slightly bigger square now. For round three, again, we are going to want to slip stitch two, and then slip stitch into that chain two space. Then we're going to chain three, which counts as a double crochet, double crochet two, chain two, and double crochet three, in that chain two space. Now we are going to skip to a space in between shells and double crochet three, and again, shells are just groups of those double crochets. So you'll notice I go back in here, I must have messed something up, but I go right in between those two shells from the previous row and work another shell or group of double crochet. Now, as always, we move to the next chain two space, double crochet three, chain two, and double crochet three more. And then again, we are going to move to that next space in between shells and double crochet three. We're going to repeat this around and then slip stitch to the top of our original chain three to join. I don't know what happened here, but the end of my footage gets cut off so you don't get to see what it looks like finished, but basically you are just going to either stop here or add more rows following the same pattern until your square is the size that you want it to be. Our triangles are going to be very similar to our granny squares, so we are going to start with a magic ring and chain three. Again, this first chain three is always going to count as one double crochet, and then in that magic ring we are going to double crochet two more, chain two, and then double crochet three.
Now in round two, we are going to start by chaining three and then turning. Again, this double crochet, or this chain three counts as a double crochet. And then we are going to double crochet two in that same very first stitch. Then we move to that chain two space and double crochet three, chain two, and double crochet three, all in that chain two space. We're making another corner here. Then in our very last stitch, we are going to double crochet three. And that very last stitch is our original chain three from the previous row. Now for round three, again we are going to chain three and turn and then double crochet two into that same stitch. We are going to move in between shells and double crochet three just like with the squares and then move to that chain two space, double crochet three, chain two, and then double crochet three more. After that, we move to the next in between shell space, double crochet three, and then double crochet three more in that final stitch, which again is the chain three from the previous row. The important things here is that you have the same number of rows as you have rounds in your squares and you should have half as many total stitches. Alrighty guys, look you can see Henry, he's who's snoring in all of my videos. So I have just made this beautiful little visual aid for you. So here's a drawing of my general layout. So here's my back panel, here are the front panels, the sleeves, and all these little squares here. This is actually like the number of squares that I used for my whole thing. Now you will need to note that you need to measure your body and you need to make a square and measure it with your gauge, whatever hook you're using, whatever yarn you're using, etc. Um, and compare those measurements and that's what you'll use to figure out how many squares you need. There is really no like basic formula for um, for figuring out how many granny squares you're going to need. That's totally up to you. Um, and whatever pattern you're working with because different granny squares are different sizes and you know anyway this is a general idea this is what I used for my sweater with my skulls I used a five millimeter hook for this but yeah here are the basic shapes so to make a little neck hole I used these triangles here to taper it off 
into um, a smaller portion here at the shoulder. You can like omit this little gap here and just make this one big piece to make a sweater and start of, instead of a cardigan. You can just make two big rectangles, like two big two of these big back panels and just leave a spot open for your neck hole. That'll work too. It'll just be a higher neckline. So experiment. It'll it'll turn out and even if it doesn't, you can just take it apart and use the granny squares for something else. It's granny squares are so forgiving. So yeah, you assemble them this way. You attach these front panels here at the shoulders to this back panel and then you attach the sleeves here to the sides. You want the center of your sleeves to be lined up with that seam from the front and back panels. Then you fold it here at the seam and you sew up the side and down the arm. You're gonna add ribbing to the ends of these sleeves, to the bottom of the sweater here, and up the front around the neck and down the other side of the front. That is helpful um, to add a couple of inches, especially on these sleeves, because for example, if I had added another row of granny squares, to my sleeves they would have been way too long but without adding more they would have been too short so I added like a kind of long cuff here to make them the appropriate length so oh and you can do all kinds of things instead of buttons you can use a zipper um, if you want to make the sleeves a solid color instead of using granny squares, that'll save you a lot of time. Um, I'm considering doing that for a couple of sweaters um, to sell. I don't know, just do whatever you want. Yeah, I think that's all we need from my visual aid. So connecting your granny squares is very easy. You are going to hold your granny squares together um, with the right sides facing each other, so facing inwards, and then the wrong sides facing outwards. Um, <clears throat> we should be familiar with how stitches at the very top, they form this kind of V shape. Here, I have some squares as an example. So they form this kind of V shape. There are um, loops on the inside and then loops on the outside. So when we're holding our granny squares together, the right sides are together and the wrong sides, so the sides with like your tails and any other um, uglies are on the outside. And we are going to take just the outside loops and stitch them together. You can slip stitch them together, that's what I prefer to do, um, and or you can like, you can, uh, you can get a needle and thread and stitch them together that way. However you want to do it is, is fine, but I prefer to do just those outside loops um, I think I filmed a little example. I prefer to do just those outside loops because they leave this like really clean line on the other side um, from that loop that's been left out. Um, and it, it just makes them look so nice and clean and straight. Um, also be aware of what kind of, like what color yarn you use to stitch these together because it will be visible sometimes. For the most part it's not, but you know, if you just pick a nice color, um, it'll look good anyway, so it doesn't matter if it shows. Another thing about this is that I chose to assemble my panels individually. I assembled my back panel all at once, and then I assembled my front panels, and then I assembled my sleeve panels, and then I put all of those panels together. I did not put like all of these squares together in just this big mass, it was just it was a lot more manageable for me to assemble the panels and then put the panels together. I attached the granny squares horizontally first and then I did all of my vertical stitching and that just saves on yarn and time. It is, it's a lot easier, I think, um, than like, 
I don't even know how else you would uh, attach granny squares really. So I, again, I just, I assembled these like horizontal, I did all these horizontal stitches first. And then once they were all like roughly attached, I did all of my um, vertical stitching and that worked great. So here's what I have. I have two sleeves. This is one, I know they're super short, it's just because the like body of mine is super wide. And then I have two of these front panels that have the triangles. Make sure that your, um, you know, the right sides are facing the right way. These have to be on the inside, so just be aware of that. And then I have one big back panel. Now for the ribbing and buttonholes. If you've seen some of my other tutorials before, this is the same ribbing I used for my striped sweater and I love this method of ribbing. I use it for any sweater I make. It's super easy. On this cardigan in particular, I don't really like the way I did the buttonholes. I, I think I did them too like close to the end here and so they got all stretched out and I, they're just kind of shitty. So. I'm gonna show you a better way of doing it. Um, it's very similar, but it's it's not quite as close to the end. So it has more support, I guess is the right word. For example, on my sleeves, I just found a starting point and I single crocheted around. Now with these sleeves in particular, I um, single crocheted one and then single crocheted two together to decrease because my sleeves were quite wide and I did that twice. I did that for two rounds, so I decreased quite a lot. You might only do one round of decreases. You might not, not do any. Um, totally fine. Depends on your sleeves and what you prefer. I also used a smaller hook. So for this sweater, I used a five millimeter hook. And then for these sleeves, I used a four millimeter hook. Um, just to keep the ribbing a little bit tighter. I just wanted it to be a little more um, like fitted to my wrist. Um, again, that's personal preference. Do what you feel called to do. I did my single crochet decreases around and then I chained, I think here I chained like 10 and then I single crocheted in the back loop only all the way back down slip stitched into the next two stitches around here and then single crocheted in the back loop only all the way back up chained one did the same thing back down always working in the back loop only and after those two slip stitches here back at the base you're gonna want to make sure that you do not single crochet into those chains 
or you'll end up increasing the number of stitches in your row and it'll make your cuff look all wonky. And that is the same thing that I did here except I made it a little bit shorter and I went back to my five millimeter hook. Also I did not decrease anywhere here and I did not decrease on the bottom of my sweater. If you want to have like more of a cinched kind of look on the bottom of your sweater then add some decreases in here. Just make sure they're spread out relatively evenly or it'll look all like puckered on one side and all spread out on the other and that'll look weird is another thing that's totally up to you. Before I started doing my ribbing I decided where I wanted my um, buttons to be. I put five buttons on here, one in kind of this upper corner, then one in each square, and then one at the very bottom corner. Um, so I marked those on both sides with stitch markers. And then when I got to a spot where um, a buttonhole should be in the middle of, um, you know, one of my back and forth rows, I chained two, skipped two stitches, and then single crocheted in the next stitch, chained one, and then worked my way back. I filmed an example, so I'll throw that in here. Um, but yeah, it's just a really simple way of making little holes. That's what I did. Another option if you're not really feeling any buttons is what I think is super cute is sometimes people will put just like a little string here and here so you can tie it in a little bow. I just think that is so cute. I love that. I kind of wish that I'd done that with mine. I don't know when or if I will do that but I think that's a super cute option and then you don't have to mess with the buttons or anything. So that should just about do it. This video was a little more experimental for me, but I really wanted to try out a tutorial that's more of like a guide than a step-by-step -step because I feel like I learn better with tutorials like that. I also wrote a script, which I don't usually do. I think it'll take some getting used to, but I get a lot less rambly when I have like a, a script to stick to. I, I like this a lot because granny squares are super forgiving, like I said before. If you assemble it and it doesn't fit right or you don't like it just take them apart and make like a couple bags or something or you know it's super easy to add some granny squares or to remove some depending on like where you feel you went wrong uh, and it teaches you a lot about like constructing a garment without um, the pressure of working in these like massive rows. So yeah, I love granny squares. Again, I will have these skull granny squares. I will have the pattern for these in the description box below along with some other paid and free granny square patterns. If you have any questions or any requests, feel free, as always, to put those in the comments below so I can help you out. You can check out my website. I've added some custom ordery type things on there that you might like. I have a bunch of my patterns uh, written out and downloadable. It helps me out a ton. Like, subscribe, share this with somebody you think might appreciate it. Send it to your mom. Ask her to make you one for Christmas. <laughs> I do that stuff all the time. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe to see what I do next time and I hope to see you there. Bye bye. <laughs>